Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. This is the Sunday night edition. Uh, thanks for everybody who's hanging out. We're going to wait and see if a few more folks, I should say, want to join us. Um, I am shiny. I am red. I was at the beach today. And it wasn't a mistake to go. But it was a mistake to not apply sunscreen as liberally as I should have. Uh, I goofed. I fucked up. And I'm paying for it. Uh, but yeah, uh, I was at the Game Developers of Color Expo yesterday. And I got back right before I would have streamed. So I decided not to do a stream on Saturday, which was great because I immediately fell asleep when I got home. And I would have been a real weird stream. I mean, tonight's stream is going to be weird. I'm going to throw the Bear Cave emote in there. If you're currently a subscriber, you can throw the emote in as well. Let me know or just say hi in the chat. Uh, like I said, we're going to wait and see if a few more folks can join us tonight before we get going. But I don't know. Um, I don't normally stream at this time. I don't know who's going to be around. I mean, Mr. Bob is here already. We're already doing great because Mr. Bob is here. Hi, Mr. Bob. Welcome, welcome. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know who's around who wants to watch streams at 9 o'clock on a Sunday. Um... As I said, uh, I did, uh, dude wants the rug is here. Happy to have you. Thank you. Um, I did get a sunburn on my face. I don't love it. You can see the difference is pretty striking. Um, don't love that. Got a little bit on the hands. Not too bad. Uh, not too bad on the hands. Mostly in the face. Uh, and, uh, that's a bummer. Just turn the color situation down. Yeah, you you know, whatever. I mean, when I'm building, I'm, my face is small anyway. It's not as noticeable. It's mostly noticeable here. And then I'm shiny because I'm wearing a lot of lotion. Because I'm going to do everything in my power to not have all of my face skin peel off. Uh, I'm going to shave tomorrow down, uh, and that'll help as well. And this is just dumb stuff while we wait to see if anybody else wants to come hang out. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Hey, reminder... Are you currently a subscriber of the Build a Bear Workshop? Well, if you are, then tomorrow you could win a model kit. I am doing a giveaway tomorrow. Um, it is the last stream of the month, the last build stream of the month, because it's almost August somehow. Uh, uh oh. Uh, so I am giving away a fantastic mobile suit, the Gundam Double X Master Grade. Uh, you don't have to know Gundam X to know that this is a great kit. Uh, oh, we just had, uh, Recyclable, uh, CY just subscribe. Thank you very much for subscribing, uh, using Twitch Prime. That's awesome. You are, uh, great. Uh, Pat, you got some sun. Ultron says, yes, Ultron. I did. I burned my face a little bit in the sun today. I was at the beach. It was great, except for this, this, and, and, and this. That's not good. Um, but it'll fade pretty quickly, hopefully, as I plan on not going outside tomorrow. And that'll help out quite a bit. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, uh, Recyclable, for subscribing. Yeah, tomorrow I'm giving away a double the double X Mastery that I built on stream. Look, the X is a great-looking mobile suit aligned with your main Gundam in a, in a show. It feels like a main Gundam. The colors look great. The fact that it has the X... Uh, the double X, like the uh, things on its back, its backpack are great. It's a great kit. Um, and uh, someone who's a subscriber is going to win that tomorrow. So if you aren't currently a subscriber, get on board. And if you are a subscriber, make sure that you uh, your subscription doesn't lapse. You know, renew. Renew that subscription. Um, I got to figure out what... Oh, the Heavy Arms Master Grade goes out after that. Ooh, that's fun. That's a good Master Grade. The old heavy arms is, is August's gift. That's fun. Um, all right. Let's go to the overhead. I don't know who's going to hang out with us tonight. Like I said, uh, I'll do a retweet on my tweet just to kind of remind folks. But, you know, this is not a time I normally stream. Uh, um, but I'm glad I didn't stream yesterday, even though I have a sunburn right now. Uh, Jam is here. Hi, Jam. Happy to have you. Thanks for coming to the stream um but yeah uh so we we're gonna finish the maganac today what what have we done with the maganac well 
we have done um, most of it. We've done uh, the head, the arms, chest, uh, the legs. Uh, we're going to build the feet next, uh, then build the ankles, uh, build the waist piece, attach them, and then work on the weapons. The weapons are pretty simple. So, yeah, we're definitely going to finish this up tonight, which is fine. This is a high grade. It's a 144 scale high grade. Uh, one thing, if you didn't watch Thursday's stream, which was my last build stream, oh, I am so red. This is so annoying how red I am. I'm sorry. Uh, I wonder. I can fiddle with the saturation, but that might, uh, that might mess with um, the green screen. So we'll see. Oh, that's better. Okay. Okay. I'm just, look, just so you know, y'all that watch later and then everybody that watched up to this point, when new people come in and say, Pat, you look a little pink, you'll know. I actually look a little red. Because now you can see the overhead camera, how red my hand is. Uh, I don't mind that at all. That's This is a lie. But for the next couple streams, this is the lie we're getting uh, while I while that fades. But yeah, so this is Mac and X 144 scale. Um, one thing I'll point out, as I said, if you were not here on... Um, uh, on Thursday. So take a look at this color here. We'll do the overhead. Let's look at the overhead here. You can see this color here, this, uh, and then compare it with, uh, the shoulders. That is a sticker. This is plastic, plastic sticker. I'm going to get real high up there. Plastic sticker. Uh, it's fairly, uh, similar. I mean, if you really look at it, you can tell it's a sticker, but from, from a distance, I feel like this, like, matches. And that's very good as far as stickers go. This sticker looks good, actually. Yeah. Um, I, I, will, I will agree with you. I think that, like, especially, like, the back where there's not a lot of, of it anyway, and it next to the shields, the shoulder pieces, I do think that this, like, does a decent job of matching. I think... Um, when you look at some of the high grades uh, from Gundam Wing, particularly when you're adding that, I think it looks bad. But I don't, I don't, uh, I don't find that with this. So that's really nice, and that's a selling point for what otherwise is a boxy, somewhat low quality kit. Uh, I mean, this kit was inexpensive, and it's meant for you to buy multiples of it. Uh, they want you to buy a lot of them. Um, uh, you know, uh, Cam Connect is now following. Thank you for the follow. I always appreciate it. The ones that you have apply at strange angles are always iffy. Yeah, Ultron. Honestly, it's it's the ones that have bends in them, like that are meant to go around a shape that are going to meant to be like the face or around the chest. Those are the ones that are really iffy. These are just applying, and it wasn't like and then over. It was like separate pieces. So that's way easier. Uh, and I think looks better. So you're, you're right. But yeah, uh, uh, Cam, thank you very much uh, for the follow. Appreciate it. Uh, and thanks everybody who's watching. As I said, Sunday night, certainly not my normal stream. I did not know what to expect, but I'm happy to have some folks here. And also uh, some new folks and some classic uh, friends of the show. Always great. Uh, Brown Lantern's not here tonight, but shout out to Brown, Lan Brown Lantern, who I met in person yesterday at the Game Developers of Color Expo. Fantastic event. So happy to see everybody there. Um, it was very cool. It was a very cool show. Um, and I uh, I was happy to take part. I worked the panel room, uh, just kind of assisting Sean Allen um, in the various things he was doing, because that was the room he was in charge of. Um, making micro talks work. Uh, trying to figure out why extending a desktop with in PowerPoint worked fine and you can see all the notes but in but using Google slideshow did the slides didn't work out as it should I we still don't know quite why that was it was very frustrating um, I don't often deal with PowerPoint or keynotes that involve notes because I am mostly dealing with comedy shows and people are not seeing the presentation that they're presenting you know they're seeing it along with everyone else uh 
Oh, we got here. Oh, you're raiding. That's awesome. Cam, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, everybody. Uh, that's so nice. Um, uh, subscribers of the Bear Cave who are already in here, uh, you know, uh, of the Build a Bear Workshop, feel free to throw the emotes in. And at the same time, Lashbrook subscribes 22 months on a 22-month stream streak yes thank you very much cam i appreciate that very much and uh uh kevin hello but yeah last brook timing my my dude the timing was off we just got raided and then you're like oh no 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 talk to me about uh that's as many as 11 twos and that's terrible well i will mention that last brook but your timing was a little off but also thank you very much for supporting me for almost two years and hey just so you know I've been streaming for two years, and I have not been a... So that means, Lashbrook, you, were you a day one? Were you a day one when I went affiliate? Because that's incredible. Uh, that Evan Jordan is now following. Thank you very much for the follow. This is not my normal time slot, but I, uh, I appreciate very much that people are here hanging out uh, and uh, checking in with me. Um, I normally uh, do build streams on... Um, on Monday and Thursday and Saturday nights, but I was at a very cool event yesterday working it, and so instead of uh, streaming, I just went to sleep early. Got to run for dinner. Hope you have a, a good night, everyone. Well, thank you very much, Cam. I appreciate the raid. That's always very nice. Uh, I'll have to pay that forward. So thank you very much for that. And uh, yeah, welcome. Um, I don't. I don't raid with y'all. I don't take y'all on raids, and I should, um, but I but I, I haven't, um, and we should do that more often. I don't know if we'll do it tonight. I'll see who's on, but uh, I should do that more often. I think that's a that's a good thing, and I don't I don't do it enough. Um, but yeah, hello everybody. You know, folks that know us, folks that don't know us, we're working on a very fun kit. Um, Maganac, first of all. I haven't said this on stream yet, but how much fun is it just, hey, at home, right now, just say Maganek. Just say the name of this kit, because it's the Maganek. It's our boxy friend, and their name is Maganek. It's a very good name. Um, but yeah, we are, uh, we're doing this, I believe, this is a very simple build. Uh, there are not a lot of bells and whistles. Uh, it's a good name. Yes, Ultron. I think the knees, the, the bendable knees and all the components into the knees here uh, were probably the most interesting. Uh, it's right up there with Bawu. Uh, Mr. Bob, I mean, Bawu is one of the best because it is utter wonderful nonsense. Um, so you're totally right. The Bawu is an incredible name. Uh, and then, hey, the name of the kit that we're going to build when this is done, the Blitz, that's no slob either. Um, it, you know what? I've always thought the Blitz could use more, like, a second name, but Jesta? Oh, the Jesta? Yeah, that's a good one. You're not wrong. I mean, also, there's the classic, Goof. Goof is just a good, terrible name. Why would you name anything Goof? They should not have named it Goof, but I'm glad they did. I'm drinking some water because uh, folks that just joining us, I have a sunburn. I went to the beach today and it ruled, but I also got myself a sunburn and that sucks. So I am now trying to drink a bunch of water uh, and cool down. I remember a PC named after the model design designation of the blitz hello solf welcome 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 happy to have you here i'm i'm so happy that the regulars are coming in obviously new folks i'm always psyched about new folks uh if you have questions about gunpla if it's something that you don't really follow or you got a question about this kit or anything that i do um please feel free to ask uh you know i am a bit of a broken record with my advice because it often is what I've said before, I haven't really changed my mind on some of the advice, but feel free to ask questions. And folks that are regulars, hey, thanks for spending your Sunday night with me. I really appreciate it because I don't stream on Sundays. 
I think I've streamed, very rarely have I streamed on this day, uh, or this time, so very happy to have some folks joining me in chat. Uh, Hama Hama, we could go on. Look, Hama, an okay name. Hama Hama, an incredible name. The Hama Hama is just great. It's just a great, terrible name for a thing. Because it does not tell you what it is. Uh, Gats 207. I had to look it up because my memory was way off. So nice you say it twice. Yes, yeah, Ultron. The Hama Hama. It's also a weird kit. And you know, you may know this about me. I do like a weird kit. That feels like it's not that secure in there. Alright. Yeah, this definitely feels like this is... Hmm. Because this doesn't want to pop right out. Yeah. Alright, I think we found the weak point of this kit. In that I can see this popping off pretty constantly. So that sucks. But hopefully it won't. Hopefully it won't, but it feels very loose. And I don't like that. Alright, it's time to work on the waist. Uh, they don't do a lot with this waist. It's pretty pretty straightforward. They don't waste a lot of time. I'm sorry. I'm in a weird mode. Uh, hi, Pat. I uh, know you from some giant bomb content you've peered in. Well, hello and welcome. Yes, uh, I'm always happy to uh, be involved with those fine folks at, uh, at Giant Bomb uh, in any capacity that they ask. Um, Often, this is the time of year where some of them are traveling, so I'm not saying it's guaranteed, but I have in the past guessed it in August, and I'm hoping that Giant Bomb East might have me uh, pop in. I don't know for sure, but I have made myself available to them, so we'll see if that works out. Um, also, because it's fun to plug uh, PAX West, especially since often folks from there are on the pa are on uh, panels of mine. Like Abby is doing 404 ing it at Pax West. So it's nice to be like, hey, plug the panel. You're on it. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Okay, just like that. Gumpla stream with Vinny and Austin would be pretty dope. Yeah. I've had the pleasure of building Lego and Gunpla with Austin on uh, two years in a row on the Waypoint streams. Um, uh, and I've been very happy to do that. We, uh, this, this, it was just this month ago, but then when they did their charity streams, uh, I've been able to come on. And uh, one year, Austin and I built a uh, mini Gunpla, uh, little SDs, and it was fun. Um, and that was really fun to do. Uh, I've still never done any building with Vinny. Uh, I taught Dan about building model kits. Uh, and I, I'd like to do that again. That was fun, like taking him through it. And he seemed to like it, so I don't know. Um, and I've hosted a show where Abby built Lego, but I'd still like to build Lego with her at the same time. I think it'd be fun. Uh, talking about weird gunpla names, I am building the Gustav Karl a mech so thick it has two names. Yeah, that just has names. I want Dan to build DB and DB kits. Yeah. Well, we worked on the um, Vegeta's space shuttle or spaceship, uh, the Saiyan space pod, but it didn't come with the sheets for Vegeta, which I think whoever sent it to Dan didn't send him the full box. That's always been my theory. But I didn't look at the box before we went live because it was part of a, a marathon, extra life marathon. So I never got a chance to like investigate what the fuck happened there. But it was fun. I would love, because I don't know if he's got any more, but I'd love to do another stream with Dan where we did some, some model kit building. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do that. So I'd be up for it again. Uh, make it a black TriStar theme stream. <laughs> Tough first person. Indeed. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I mean, I would like to do that. Uh, Gustav Carl is... That's just names. I don't know about that one. I'm pretty sure... Now, don't quote me on this. Don't quote me on this. I'm pretty sure those are just names. Um, so, so I went to the beach today. Uh, I went to Jacob Rees. Uh, it is a national park and a beach. And it costs 
very little money to park there. It's a free beach other than the parking is like 10 bucks. Uh, it's annoying. It's annoying to get to. So one of the, the coolest things about this beach is, and it's been documented. I'm not sharing any secrets is. So here's the thing. In New York City, great in Manhattan, it is 100% totally and fully legal to be topless. There are no laws or rules or regulations in a public space. It is okay to be topless. Now, do people do that? Generally, no. But on Jacob Reese Beach, are people topless? Yes. Yes, they are. Also, I don't know why, but queer folks decided that was there in our beach. Uh, so there is an actual closed hospital, like an abandoned federally owned hospital uh, on the on this beach. And in f that's where you go because that, that's the end of the beach. You go to that end of the beach and everybody knows, hey, everybody's welcome. It's a public beach. Just so you know, peoples are not going to have some tops on. Not everybody. It's not required. It's not a nude beach or anything. It's just a fucking chill, cool place. So I posted a photo today of me and like the beach in the background and be like, I'm at the beach. And some people were like, hey, wear sunscreen, which I did, just not enough. And then literally three different folks who are uh, various uh, queer entities messaged me just being like, are, are you at Reese? Oh, you're at Reese. And it's just like, and one literally just, I got a text from a friend that just said, Reese, which is R-I-I-S, all capital letters with exclamation points. Because they knew, they knew where I was at. Um, and it's a great goddamn time. I ran into a friend of mine, because of course I did. Uh, went into the water for a bit, which was very nice and refreshing. Very cold, Atlantic Ocean. Cold just about everywhere. Uh, you know, up and down the coast. Very cold cool lots of waves uh and then also uh hey everybody did i see people of all races creeds and colors yes did i see a friend of mine who i did not know would be there yes did i also see Beach Goss. Yes, I did. Ding, 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 ding. Aruga. Er, 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 air horn. Beach Goss. Oh, it fucking ruled. We're talking alt. We're talking young people. We're talking dude in a long black dress at the beach. Were several of them wearing purple hair dye. Hell yes, they were. Was one of them had silver hair with purple highlights. Yes, she did. Did. They set up a very big beach umbrella that was black with a skull on it. You know they fucking did. Oh. It was awesome. It was right at the end of our, our time there. And I turned to my friends and I was like, I'm so bummed that we are leaving just as the beach goth showed up. Oh, look, were some of them seen and alt and not really goth? Yes, but beach goth evokes an image, and that image that beach goth evokes is accurate. It ruled. It also reminded me of, um, there is a YouTube, not a YouTube, but there's a Twitch account that a friend of mine runs. Um, I don't know if he's, like, made it known that he runs it, so I won't say his name, but a, a good friend of mine runs uh, Goth Water Park. It is obviously a parody uh, a joke um, Twitter account, but you should check out Goth Water Park. And it really reminded me of that. Uh, and it was, it just was fucking rad. It was just beach goths. I was so psyched about fucking beach. And not workout goths, because workout goths is a different thing. Beach goths are goths at the beach, and they're like, now, did I wish? That one of them was wearing an old-timey ladies' bathing suit. Yes, they weren't. Most of them were topless. Because, as I said, Jacob Reese Beach, 
chill and cool. But I was hoping that one of them was going to wear an old-timey bathing suit. They were not. Did one of them have a parasol? Yes. Oh, it was fucking great. It was one of those things where you're just like, this beach trip was relaxing, but now I'm amped and pumped up and psyched about everything. Like it rejuvenated me and made it so I did not fall asleep in the car ride home. Because my friend rented a zip car and that's how we got to the, this place because it's not easy to get to. Um, Jacob Reese Beach is not... Jacob Reese Beach is like at least two buses. Like even if you live in Brooklyn like I do, there's you're going to take a bus and that bus, shuttle bus runs on its own dumb schedule and sucks. So I was more than happy. I'm sorry, I'm getting... Oh, everything's fine. Just getting some emails. Everything's cool. Um, but yeah. It was a great day at the beach. All right, this is interesting. Going to try to figure out how this connects. So this is going to go in here. And then over, and then lock in, looks like. So look in there. But yeah, it was a great day at the beach. I was really psyched to go. I needed it. I haven't been to the beach all summer. Uh, I don't care that I burned. I'll pay for it tomorrow. I'm paying forward it. But yeah. Uh, so, beach goths. Rules, school, and we're great. Downside. And there was a downside, unfortunately. Uh, there was a king of the beach. Uh, and, you know, if you go to outdoor events, you go to public spaces, there's always going to be the king. Is this person white? Almost exclusively. If you're on the East Coast, they are also probably Italian-American. I say that because this gentleman had a very large Italian flag. And also a bunch of American flags. It does not matter the color of his skin. It does not matter his ethnicity. It do, Those things do not matter at all. But this man who was the king of the beach is the kind of person that I am very afraid that I someday will become. Did he know the name of the lifeguard and constantly shout the name of the lifeguard to get the lifeguard's attention? Yes, he did. Did he enact a barrier around him, thus making his own sovereign nation on the beach, complete with posts, a little bit of a fence, a fucking hammock? Yes. This person must live near the beach because they were bringing such nonsense to the beach. It was so annoying. Uh, a group of people tried to sit near him and he had a fit about it because they were too close. A thing I've never seen before. This man had a plastic uh, lining for, like, setting up a pool. And then he got a big bucket and kept walking to the ocean. And then he filled up his own, like, pool the size just for one person to sit in. And sat in his own pool of seawater at the fucking beach. Did he have a horn that made a sound like if you blew into a conch shell? Yes. He did have that. And I'm sure you know that. What I'm going to say here. No. Uh, recyclable. <laughs> he had... So the best part was, I, we were in front of him, and he was annoying, and he, he sucked, and I hated it. And I kept hearing him, and then, like, he would do whatever things, and he would talk to people. And he would talk at people, you know, make new friends, be that kind of a person that talks to strangers, because they need human connection. And then I noticed, when I got up to go get food, that at the edge of the property, right at the edge of his domain, there was a lawn chair and a woman sitting on that chair who just looked so unhappy and I don't wish unhappiness on her I hope that she finds happiness I hope 
that this time at the beach is the only unhappy time that she has in her life. And I don't know fucking know. I don't know why he does seem awful. Ashbrook says going to the beach as an adult sounds wild. So this is a pretty wild thing. Harold is raiding with a party of two. Thank you, Harold. Can't believe we're getting so many raids tonight on a Sunday evening. Thank you so much, Harold. Appreciate that very much. Uh, Harold, always appreciate your visits. Uh, I'm going to throw the Bear Cave boat in there. And the scythe. Thank you, Harold. We were just talking about this terrible person at the beach today. Just an awful, awful person. Uh, yeah, I just had no interest in that person's existence and was happy when we left. Just nonsense. There were some very nice people around and it was a cool, chill day other than this dude. Really kind of was bad. But yeah, it's just one of those people that like their their weekend life or maybe retirement. I couldn't really tell this person's age, but they had a tan that suggested that this person is at the beach at least every weekend and all the gear they had. Like, who brings a fucking hammock to the beach unless the beach is your backyard? Yep, that popped out. I don't like that. I don't like this. This is a weak point in this kit, it looks like. Why the pool, though? I don't know. Aaron tries, maybe. Yeah, no. Uh, I don't understand. Yeah, Aaron lo look, Aaron loves a hammock. But Aaron wouldn't bring a hammock to the beach. He would bring a beach chair. He understands the, the ways of the world and the tools of the trade. Uh, although he does, he is jokingly thinking about putting one in his thing. The pool seems logically bad as the water seems like it would warm up. Yeah, Mr. Bob. Also, uh, he kept talking about how he has to wear special sunscreen so he doesn't get oils in his pool water. And yes, he did call it pool water. And yes, I do hate him. I don't, it's an exaggeration. I don't hate him. I just hope that he changes his life. I hope that he reflects on the choices he's made and thinks about how he could be a better human in this world. It's just. Or also, hey, I, I mean, I don't know this person's sexuality. I don't know anything about this person. I can't make any judgments on that. I won't make any judgments on that. But that section of the beach, that section of the beach is for queer folks. It's they, they designate themselves. They claimed that part of the beach. And I don't know if this person, you know, if that fits in with this person or what. Uh, they're certainly welcome. But like, hey, go be an asshole at some other part of the beach. If you gotta be one. Like, let the gay folk have that part of the beach. They claimed it. Just weird. Just weird energy. Overly serious beach people are weird. Yeah, Mr. Bob, it was real fucking weird. Um, it was real weird, and part of it was not cool. Yeah, it was It was the bummer part. My hometown is a beach town, and there have been so many folks that go every day in the summer with outlandish gear. Yeah, it's a thing where, like, they, they end up making the beach their backyard. And it's like, look, this is for everybody. Like, it's all a community. I had some really good. That's some good food there, though. So I was happy about that. I got a grilled cheese with pickles in it. And the pickles weren't totally warm, even though grilled, the cheese had melted. And it got a good crunch, a good crunch in there. Uh, and then it was too salty, but I was drinking lots of water anyway. I will say, it was a very good time okay so we got to put a sticker on our our weapon here we've got our gun um and i don't i don't like this tiny little dot we got a tiny little sticker here the, the, the purple one and it's gonna go onto the scope of our gun and i'm gonna do it on my best my family went to the beach for part of last week. I stayed home and dog sat for my parents. I'm not a beach person. Harold, I'm not much of a beach person. Now, if you had been here in the earlier stream, like, it's fine you weren't. Believe me, it was fine. 
Um, I actually turned down the saturation because you can see here I got burn, I got sunburned. Uh, it'll fade. It'll be okay. Nothing hurts. Uh, also, I wore this the entire time, or another one, not this one, a, a bandana the entire time I was there, other than when I took a photo. Uh, so I protected my scalp and my forehead and the top of my head, which I have sunburned before. When I still had hair and a bald spot, I su I got sunburned there, and it was awful. Mr. Bob says, I miss the beach, but I don't have a beach crew. live in the middle of Virginia now. Yep, I mean, you know, you got to have a beach crew. Public pools are fun. They're not the same. Um, I was bummed that a friend of mine, unfortunately, felt ill and, and didn't join us. But the crew I was with was very laid back. Some real nice people. And then I ran into, like I said, I ran into a friend of mine. And I'll say it because she mentioned that she was there. Uh, uh, Emmy, uh, who is Ugly Machine on Twitter. Uh, you may know her as the uh, the Onion from the last League of Heels Rumble. Um, and she's a fantastic photographer and a uh, person in the games industry and fucking rules. And I was so happy to see her. She's just great. Uh, I'm trying to get a splash pad behind the bar for the children. Heck yeah! You know takes a lot of water and it's somewhat of a waste but you know inflatable pools are pretty great all right so that went on not too bad that sticker went on not too bad uh we got one of our two weapons here we're gonna build the other weapon uh and when i say build the other weapon it there's no building they gave me they gave us the heated tomahawk which i'm just gonna call an axe and not a tomahawk because that is not great uh, what became of the young onion child she had? Somebody took it. I can't remember who. I think Harris ended up with it, if I remember correctly. Uh, but yeah, Emmy fucking rules. She's a rad person. This is the ability I have as person who was booking that event. I just put in really rad people that I like. Hope that ended, onion ended up in Austin. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so that's the axe. It's just one piece. Now, if this was a master grade, it would be multiple pieces, and the blade would be its own piece, and there'd be connectors, and it'd be all thing. It's not. It's a high grade. Ooh, I am sweat. As I said, I'm expecting to be sweating a lot out of my pores. Also, I put on a lot of lotion because <laughs> important. Um, all right, so now we, the only thing left with this is to build a shield. we got to build a shield, and we're excited to build that. It's a very easy process to build the shield together. It is the last two of our stickers. Not too many stickers on this kit. Uh, rad people are rad. Indeed. Indeed, Harold. Indeed. Um, so yesterday was the Game Developers of Color Expo in Harlem. Uh, it was an awesome event. Really cool people. Uh, I volunteered. I worked and helped with panels. Um, when the panels go live on their YouTube and they start breaking them out because they stream the whole thing, when they break them out into separate YouTube videos, I will link in in chat and then also on the show description this incredible talk about uh, making... Sorry, let me drink some water. There was uh, two 10-minute talks that really stood out to me. One was... Um, please reuse assets. Why are we building everything from the ground up? It was a call to action. Uh, it was talking about how, like, people were upset with, like, w you know, when people reuse assets and give examples. And it was very impassioned, and I really believe that. Uh, that, you know, like, that, yeah, I mean, like, if it leads to great design, then people should go for it. Um, if it means that you can, like, make new you can build new things in far cry primal because you're reusing the map from previous far cry you're not worrying about the map that way you can work on uh new design choices and new uh mechanics then i'm like yeah it makes sense uh palette sauce can work wonders since all yeah so that was a really great talk and i'll link to that when that's archived on youtube uh properly and pulled out and all that uh the other talk that was really great 
was to talk about uh, the uh, character lead on a NASCAR game. And I don't know which one, but there's a NASCAR game where uh, the character creator was changed to, to basically remove the gender binary. You just create a character from a bunch of different options and you don't choose male and female and you don't lock out options because you chose one of those. It And the person and, and educating their team and the steps to do that and how this person did that. And it was fucking awesome. It was a great talk and it got an applause break at one point. And I definitely, even though I was working, yelled fuck yeah because it was a really feel good inspirational talk. There were some really cool, interesting talks uh, on the the whole time. Uh, it was a nice mix. They did long form panels and they did ten minute mini talks, and it was a great, a whole great day. Um, I was into it. Uh, Game Developers of Color Expo is a one day event, but it was very fun. As I said, saw Brown Lantern there. Came up and said hi. A couple people will know me from uh, Giant Bomb stuff and from Internet stuff. Came up and said hi. There, were, there was one person who was just like. Are you Pat Bear? He's just surprised to see me there, which I'll, I'll appreciate. Uh, and then one game that I saw there that I thought was really fun, and uh, the art was really cool, and I'm going to look this up, uh, the name of it. Um, so hold on. Hold, hold the fuck on. Everybody relax. Fucking chill out. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to find it. Just be fucking cool. Uh... Queer Space Time. Queer Space Time is a card game dating sim. And all of the uh, character art is fantastic. The character descriptions of people are great. And yeah, it's a card game uh, called Queer Space Time. And it uh, is great. Queering Space Time. Sorry. Uh, Queering Space Time is the name of it. I apologize. Um, and I guess they're going to have a Kickstarter this year. But it was a cool looking game. I watched some of it. I played a very little tiny bit of it. Queering Space Time. Uh, probably one of the NASCAR Heat games. Only rescarting the games I know of. That's probably what it was, Harold. Um, I don't know for sure. Um, but it was... Uh, there will probably... I will link to that when those go. If those get broken up or when, when I can, I will link to them. Because it's very cool. So, um, we have options here for holding our weapons, which I think is very cool. So, let's go over the options. Let's go over all our options for, for this stuff. So, we can take the axe off the hand. Put the axe on here. Here, and then put that on the back. That's cool. I like that. That's fun. For display, I probably won't do that, but that's fun. Now, we can take the shield, and we can put the shield on, uh, let's see, this side? Yeah. That. We can put that there. Wait. Is that going to go? Does it work? How does this work? Oh, okay. It goes like this. Got it. So then we can put the shield on the arm like that. Just holds the shield. I think that looks cool. That's a fun one. Way to do it. Or, we also have the option of storing the shield on the back. And if we want, we can put the gun in it as well. Which is very cool. Goes under like that. And then the gun is held, and it's not held super securely. As you can see, it's it's pretty wobbly. Uh, it comes out, so that isn't great. I, I think that is a bummer that it's not super secure. But if we do that, and then put this on here, and that goes like that. All right, oh, other way. And that goes like that, and then it lives on the back of it. And I think that's pretty cool that all the weapons can go on the back. And I'll show that from there. I think that's pretty neat. Um, 
I'm going to change it up so that it's holding all the weapons because to me that's the most interesting way to do it. But I'll leave the back thing on there. Let's put that there. Uh, and it does, as I said, uh, it comes with some water transfer numbers. If you want to water transfer some numbers, uh, the one that gives example of is putting 40 on there. And you would put the same number on one of the shoulders and then on the shield. And that would designate it. And you definitely do that if you had multiples of this, which we don't have multiples of this. We just have the one. Um, but I am going to do a closer look coming up at some point probably where I put those on there because that's fun for me. Uh, but yeah, we're going to do this one here. We'll do the old shield here. Because why not have the shield out and about? Do you dabble in airbrushing your gunpla? No. Um, so I uh, just kind of in the past, I mean, doing stickers is something I've been doing for a while, but I've just started really experimenting with um, water transfer and dry transfer stickers. Um, but I don't do any painting. Uh, marker work or that. I like the idea of multiples of the same kit, but I hate doing the same steps over and over again. Totally agree, Mr. Bob. I wouldn't want to do another one of these soon. Um, but I wouldn't mind having more in my collection. But yeah. Um, so uh, to answer your question, Recyclable, I don't do uh, any painting um, or airbrushing or even marker work. Um, I don't have the, the knack for it. I wish I did. I wish I had the patience for it. I wish I had the minute detail like desire one of the reasons why i don't build that many real grade kits is because they are very small and detailed even though they're 144 scale there are a lot of details and i'm i'm my i have big fingers like i just have big stubby hands and i do my best with the tools i have provided um but yeah i mean some some folks here in the chat like if you join the discard uh using a flat coat to start make stuff pop with super low effort. i totally agree um, but uh, if you, you know, my Discord, uh, which I'll link to in a little bit when we take our pause for the cause, um, uh, there are folks here who watch that do detail work that is incredible. Uh, everyone, you know, like, it, I'm blown away by people's talents, uh, which I just don't, yeah, I just don't have the skill for it. Um, that's one of the reasons why I never got super into miniatures, because you really need to paint them to make them your own. And I just never had the draw, the drive for it. Um, I've always had an interest in that, just not in the painting aspect. Um, but yeah, uh, I could see doing some line work on the Magnac here and really making this pop. And I think it would be great. But that's the Magnac. Uh, the Magnac. Uh, it's a fun kit. It's an easy build. You know, one four four scale. Like, it's pretty inexpensive. I could see myself doing multiples of these. Uh, as I said, I do have a, uh, I will have a closer look video at some point in the future. Uh, I do do this twice a month where I just kind of like show off some stuff, do compare and contrast videos, all that. Uh, and I will be doing that. But my next video, which won't come out for an, another week, I'm very excited about because I figured it out. So the next kit we're going to work on is the Blitz. And I'm excited about the Blitz. Don't get me wrong. When I say we're doing the Blitz next, that's me. I, I am excited about this kit. This is a cool kit. It's got it's got a little Death Scythe vibe to it, which I enjoy. Uh, I like the idea of a stealth Gundam. I think that's fun. It's got some sort of hook thing going because we got this. This. Ooh, what happened here? Why did I get weird? Okay. Uh, it might be because I turned the contrast down on my face that it's, it's going weird. But I apologize. Uh, or because I moved a box in front of myself. Um, but yeah, this is a great kit. And not too many stickers. Always appreciate that. Uh, so let me... Hold on. Let me just... Blah, 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 real quick. Figure video. Alright, let me just change the saturation. I'm going to make myself a little redder. A little more naturally red. And that'll fix the problem. And it did. And they can see that, yeah, I got a sunburn. I got a sunburn, y'all. Uh, plenty of our, our uh, rubber connectors. But, um, so, I am excited about this kit. Please do not get it twisted. This is a cool-looking kit. 
I'm excited to put it together. When this kit is done, I'm going to do something that people have been asking for for a while. We're going to kit bash. So after the blitz, when the blitz is done, we shall kit bash. Now, what does that mean? Many of you know exactly what that is. Uh, I'm going to be taking some parts, random parts, random assortments of kits, and we're going to combine them together. I have never done that before. I have never modded a kit before. I have never messed with parts. We are going to start with a frame from Iron Blooded Orphans, one of the uh, um, full body mechanics frames, because that's a solid frame. It's an easy frame to build, and I have a spare full blood mechanics kit from a one of the kits from the show. And then we're going to take a kit that was purchased as a gift for me that because the box is so huge, I'm never going to send it out. There's a kit out that I, I have in my collection that I appreciate that I have, but the box is so big, the shipping would be ridiculous that I'm going to take apart that kit and I'm going to grab a bunch of pieces from that. And then I'm going to pick some other kit. Some other kit, I don't know which one. But I'm going to take parts from that too. And then we're going to take these three kits. They're all going to be the 100 scale. And we're going to see what the fuck happens. And I'm psyched about it. That's in the future. We got the Blitz Gundam, but that is coming up after the Blitz Gundam has been completed, the next step in our evolution is we will finally kit bash. And we're going to find out. Oh, do I like this armor? No. Do I like the legs that came with this? Yes. Do I like this weapon? Sure. We, we probably will probably take apart one kit to pull pieces to put together with another one. And then we will probably borrow weapons from other kits. Because uh, I don't, I don't like the idea of salvaging more than one kit. Um, but I'm excited to do it, and I'm going to look into like, sp you know, sometimes when you buy a master grade, it has components if you want to like do it like another way. It has like alt armor and and whatever. I might be pulling some of those out. I might be going through my kits to see what I've got that I know I'll never build with. Because like, well, we're going to display it like this. We wouldn't display it the other way. Um, it should be pretty exciting. I've always wanted to do it. That's in the future, though, because we got a master grade to build. That means you get to name it and give it a designation, a Papier original. Indeed, recyclable. I didn't even really think about that, but yes, we will build, we're going to build our own, uh, our own AU, uh, Gundam. That's in the world of Iron Blood and Orphans because it's because that's a skeleton. So we're gonna build our own like Gundam from from Iron Blood Orphans basically is what how I'll look at that. Uh, and that's ridiculous, but I'm very excited about it. All right, so we got our pilot here. Now to talk about this kit. One, look how fucking cool this kit is. Black and red. Fuck yeah, very excited about this kit. I love all the colors. The purple is great. The fact there's not too much purple and it's mostly black. The PTPRX. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Um, there's a lot to be said about the, this Blitz kit. I should say, I don't remember anything about Gundam Seed. I remember not enjoying the first couple episodes that I watched. I think I got a disc of it, maybe even fan subbed. And I remember not really liking it. And then I have never paid attention to it. I know that there's Des Gundam Sea Destiny. I know that there's some people that really like it. And there's people that really hate it. And some people that don't hate it. And don't understand why people hate it. They just don't really care about it. Uh, and I can appreciate all of that. I have no attachment to the series. But I saw the Blitz Gundam. It's basically a slightly more emo remake of the original, is what Recycle says. Uh, and then Ultron says, I know I love the suit designs, but never really watched. I believe Seed is retelling a Moses Gundam. Okay, so it's a modern retelling for a new audience. Because uh, when it came out. That makes sense. 
totally makes sense. Uh, and the idea of it being more emo is kind of laughable about the uh, oh, this is the concept of Gundam, but more emo. <laughs> it's very funny. But yeah, I think it was, if I remember correctly, um, it also makes use a lot of CG, in it, in which, you know, is the way fucking animation is going to be. And so people were, were bummed about that. Kind of like how Double O is a remake of Wing. Yeah, okay. Um, but I, I know that some people didn't like the, the CG of it and were bummed about about how it looked. But yeah, like I said, I don't have much of a connection to this thing. I just... Uh, I just know this mobile suit is awesome. I remember it uh, lifting a lot from the story of Zeta, but it totally does have a char. Yeah, Lashbrook, that sounds right and good. I just, like I said, I don't have any connection to get him seed. I'm just surprised. I've, I'm honestly shocked that uh, I've never that I haven't built this kit yet. Uh, I ended up picking it up, and I was like, "Oh yeah, why haven't I built the Blitz yet? It's totally, it totally feels like a Death Scythe, like a Death Scythe variant." There is a new MG Zaku uh, that looks really good, real good. Ooh, okay. New Zaku, huh? All right. That's fun. Um, look, I don't know if that Shenlong is going to end up on Amazon or if it's just going to be through Bandai site. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that Shenlong at New York Comic Con. But I will tell you this. I will get that Shenlong. I will build that new Shenlong that has a sword that is from a manga that I have not read. I will get that sword with a cable attached to its shield. New Shenlong Gundam. Because there's one thing in we all know about this channel. If this is your first time or your 22nd month of being a subscriber, I build mobile suits from Gundam Wing on this channel. I have built all of them, except for the two that are impossible to find because they just don't, they, they made them and finding the 144 scale of them is very hard. And someday I will find them and I'll build them. Don't worry about it. It's going to happen. But if it's available commercially, I build it. You know this. I have built the first perfect grade. I built, bought by Steve Lynn. Incredible supporter. Steve Lynn sent me the Wing Zero perfect grade. And I built that. And it was scary as fuck. And, uh, because it was a perfect grade. Um... You build the uh, yes, I did. Um, we've we've built the uh, the Maganac. Obviously, we built today, uh, but we also built the Leo that came out uh, last year or whatever. Um, the high grade. We built the high grade Leo. Um, so, I should say this: Have I built every single version, every high grade and master grade of every kit? No. I have like other than the Death Scythe, which I just I, some of them I built on my own. Like, I haven't built the high grade of the Sandrock, regular old Sandrock. Now, the Endless Waltz, I built the high grade of that because it's incredibly expensive to buy the master grade of that because it's like a very limited run. It's over $100. So I haven't built that. But like, uh, and eventually I'll, I'll, I will buy the Tall Geese 3 real grade. I will get that at some point. Have not pick that up that's new I don't even know if it's officially out yet but I will get that at some point even though I don't really like real grades uh, on stream I like real grades in my own building life and not stream not that I build things off stream anymore now that I build six hours a week I don't really build my own that often um, but I uh, yeah uh, I think I have them on let's see I'm going to look at my USA Gundam store. I have a, uh, a wish list. Oh, oh. 
Oh, I gotta sign in. Hold on. What? Come on. Whatever. I'll do that later. Uh, I have I have them saved on USA Gundam, like the two uh, high grades, old high grades, one for four old high grades. They got a build. Basically, the other mobile suits from the show that haven't gotten a re-release. I gotta build those at some point. But yeah, um, I built the. I basically I built the high grade, the one four four scale high, or the one one hundred high grade. When I can't buy, build the master grade, I prefer to build master grades on this channel. Uh, that is my sweet spot. Um, but I will build, you know, a high grade if I got to. Like if they ever put out a serpent master grade, I don't know if I would get that since I built the high grade. I don't know. I might. It depends. Um, you know, but. Endless Wall or well, Endless Waltz and Wing are my favorite shows. They are they they are by far. Uh, I had always like known about Gundam and I watched some of the original and enjoyed it, but it wasn't until Wing that I fell in love with the show. And then quickly, soon after that, found G Gundam, which is not good, but is very good. Uh, had this conversation pretty recently with someone who was recommending G Gundam to somebody that was like hey what are Gundam shows I should watch and I was like um look there's a lot to love about G Gundam but also there's a lot of problems with it G Gundam isn't good but it's got a lot of heart yeah Gundam 79 yes I mean like look the real answer is not the real answer but a answer is 8th MS team. Yes, Lar. Like, yes. Lars, you're totally right. 8th MS team is a Gundam show to recommend to people that are like, hey, what if I, could I check out Gundam? Uh, G see, here's the thing. I love Domo. I love his arc. I love the struggles he go through. I love the faults that he has. Um, I love his stupid expressions and stupid sayings that are totally heartfelt and totally like believe like come from his soul uh i ship him and rain they're they you know they're the best uh alan b gets a raw deal but it even at the time like looking at it's just the nicest thing you can say at it is that it is fully aware that it is being very stereotypical and is fine with being stereotypical if it means it can tell the story it wants to tell. That's the nicest thing you can say about G Gundam. Because like literally the only character that it's that they're not one of the old not the only one of the only characters that they're not completely stereotypical about, they are instead very sexist about. Because Neo Sweden and Allen B. It's hard because the Noble Gundam is a Sailor Scout. It's Sailor Moon the Gundam, which is incredible. But also, she has a beam ribbon and high heels, and that sucks. But also, it's a Sailor Scout Gundam that fucking rules. But every other Gundam except for uh, the Shining Gundam, really, uh, and the Master Gundam, is very representative of the stereotypes of a country. But not Neo Sweden. They just were like, well, we have a lady pilot, so let's not make this Swedish. Instead, let's just make it a lady. Ugh. As I said, there's a lot to love about that show. Um, but the Holland Gundam. Yeah, I mean, just... And then also, then obviously... Uh, it's a freaking windmill. Yes. Look, the Holland Gundam is fun because it's a windmill, but also, ugh, because it's a windmill. Like, honestly, that show could get away with a lot more if it just was a line where they said, like, what if the council said, the winning country, you know, the winning colony, you know, has a lot of say in the government or whatever. 
and gets to pick the designs of the mobile suits for each country and each colony. So like, oh, why is this like this? We didn't choose it. Neo Japan made us do this. I think that's a funny, like that could be a funny choice of like, oh no, they're, this, this is them fucking with us. This is what they think America is. So that's why uh, it's a football boxing man. <laughs> I don't know. To me, that would be that would be like something. Yes, recyclable. Um, so I tried. I, I bounced off build fighters. I like a lot of the kits in build fighters. We just built uh, a kit not too recently. Um, that was the the finisse. We just finished up the finisse not too long ago. Um, I bounced off of it because that just wasn't. I maybe they shouldn't have introduced an alien in the first episode. I don't know. Because I was like pretty psyched about it just being Angelic Lair or Rock Band EXE. Uh, and then they were like, oh yeah, aliens. I don't know. But I do love the idea of it. And I love the idea of uh, a Gundam show that celebrates Gunpla and the people that love it. Not just It's not just a love letter to Gundams. It's a love letter to Gunpla. And I think that's incredible. And I love that. And I love that, yes, basically it's it's... The whole show is kit bashing. Uh, and then you get, like, the second season is more grounded, if that makes any sense. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I love the idea of, like, um, what was it? Uh, like, the love phantom. The love phantom is, hey, what if it was a death scythe, but also had spider legs? I don't know. That would be cool. It's That would be cool, the show. And I can really appreciate that. But yeah, I bounced off of it. Wasn't super feeling it. If I have another lull this year in anime, if there's a season like this particular season of anime, there's just so much to watch. And we're going to take a pause for the cause in a moment. Uh, and after the pause for the cause, I'll start talking about some of the shows I've been watching. Uh, there's just a lot to watch right now. So I haven't been keeping up. I, I haven't had time for like a rewatch, basically. The second season is probably the best. It also has uh, all the mini spinoffs and specials. Speaking of which, I didn't watch. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll watch it tomorrow. There's a new. Is it? Is it? Did it come out? Is there a new? There's a new Gundam show, I think. But did it come out today, or is it coming out? Did that come out yet? What for that new Gundam show? Did that come out yet, Mr. Bob? Is it a new SD Gundam show that's supposed to be out? I'm going to look and see if it came out. Uh, or maybe it's next week. I thought it was this week, but I don't know. Uh, I think it's within the week. Okay. Um. Yeah, uh, so there's a new Chibi Gundam show that also sort of looks like, uh, like Romance of the Three Kingdoms, but also maybe like Attack on Titan or, or like a zombie show. I don't know. I don't know if what to make of this new Gundam show, but I will watch it because it's a new Gundam show. Um, so I'll check. I'll when that whenever that comes out, I'll find out. You like use some three K? I tried. So I'm going cool through about the ideas. There's super post you see, and there's a Gundam museum. That's pretty cool, Mister Bob. Uh, that is pretty cool. I have not seen it. Um. All right, so I need K1 and K2, which is J, K. Ooh, our red. Just a little bit of red, just for funds. All right, so I'm going to set this up. So, uh, SD Gundam World. Yes, that's the name of it. Uh, the World Sango Goku sets it in. Yeah. Just put that in the browser. See what's going on with that show. Uh, 
Oh, the episode one is on Gundam Info. But I thought it was going to be on Crunchyroll. It is. Okay. It is on Crunchyroll. Okay. It came out. The fourth. It's going to be monthly on Fridays. All right. So I'm adding it to my queue. Uh, it literally has one. It has no user rankings, which doesn't mean anything. Uh, but it came out on Friday. All right. It's now on my queue and I will watch it tomorrow during my lunch and I will uh, report back. Uh, but yeah, no, apparently it's the fourth Friday of every month. So that happened. That was on the 26th. So it's going to be monthly. Oh boy. Um, okay. So now it's the part of the show. If you're new, this is the pause for the cause. It's very brief. I will get back into the action very soon. Uh, but, um, uh, this is just a, a brief little time to talk about ways you can support the channel if that's something you'd like to do. First and foremost, thank you to everybody who's watching. There's a lot of you. Sunday nights are not a normal stream night for me. Uh, uh, does back order basically mean never going to have more? Often, yes, but also Japan, like Bandai's re, re like they, their schedule of when they like make, put more product out there is weird. So it could be, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, uh, throw the emote in there if you're a subscriber. Thanks so much for watching. Like I said, I don't normally stream on Sundays. I'm very happy to have folks here in the chat on a Sunday night. I appreciate that very much. Uh, if you're a subscriber, throw it in there. Uh, if you'd like to become a subscriber, I would love that. Uh, you can use Twitch Prime if you link your uh, Amazon Prime with your uh, Twitch. You get Twitch Prime, and it's like a free token. Or you can use cash money. You get cool emotes like I put in the chat, which I always appreciate. Aristofan's here. Hi, Aristofan. Uh, happy to have you here. Um, uh, I stream generally Mondays and Thursdays and Saturdays from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I build model kits and Lego sets. Uh, and bits and coins, always appreciate it. If that's something you'd like to do, you're more than welcome to do that. Aristofan, hello, hello. Happy to have you here. Um... Uh, but yeah, if you want to throw uh, any money my way, it, it all goes into buying kits. Um, I also have a Patreon, uh, which you could join, and there's some rewards there. I won't dwell on that. We'll get back to building soon. This is just like, look, I'm uh, I'm an affiliate. I'm not a a a, um, uh, a partner. So this is my ad break, which we do basically in the middle of every show. Just talk about that. Um, yeah, check out the Patreon if that's something you're interested in doing if you don't want to become a subscriber, but you still like to support. Speaking of support, you could also uh, buy something off my Amazon wish list. I've got my Amazon wish list here. Uh, I'll, I've got some cheap stuff up top, like some small uh, vehicles from Dragon Ball. They're very small. They, they would need to be painted. They're cool. Little chibi uh, mechs. Some Lego sets that are pretty inexpensive and it's kind of small. Um, I just like the idea of, like, the transport and the caravan. I was like, I don't know. They've got a fun to build. Um, yeah. Uh, some kind of inexpensive kits and then some more expensive kits. Uh, anything that's bought on my wish list jumps the queue. Uh, so if you want to see something get built on the stream, I would love that. Um, if you'd still like to buy something on, uh, to support me, but you, you think, hey, I don't want to buy anything on Amazon. Is there another way to do it? Well, unfortunately, the way the wish list work for them is... Awesome, because you click on a thing, you pay for it, it gets sent to me, and that's just very convenient and easy, and it means that my home address is not out on the internet, and that's great. Um, another way to support me is to buy gift cards at USA Gundam Store. I'll put a link here in the chat. It's also all in the show description on, on uh, our uh, YouTube for the YouTube archive. Um, if you go to USA Gundam Store, you can buy a gift card. You get an email with a code, and then send me that code. Uh, you could send it to me. My DMs are open. You could send me a whisper here on Twitch, a message on Patreon. You got a bunch of different ways. Um, and you send me that code, and then I use it to buy model kits to build on stream on USA Gundam Store. Uh, that's unfortunately annoying because you can't just have it sent to my email as far as i can tell it's got to be sent to your email that's on your account so that's not as 
convenient as Amazon. But if you don't want to use Amazon, but you still like to send some money my way, you can do that. You'd also just use coffee. Uh, I have a coffee. You can tip me on there. Always appreciated. And anything, coffee, um, Patreon, Twitch, all of that goes to, for buying kits. Because obviously, expensive habit, expensive streams. It's not like I'm buying PUBG and then I'm going to play PUBG for the next two years and I bought it once. That's not how the stream works. I got to buy more kits to build kits. Um, I appreciate that. I have a Discord. Feel free to join the Discord. It's very laid back. People post photos of kits they're working on. I post links to everything I put on YouTube, so it's an easy way to keep track of that if you don't want to follow me on Twitter because you've gotten off Twitter, because which sounds great. Um, that sounds rad if you have. Uh, I, I needed to connect with people and to promote my shit, and I wish I did it, but I do. Uh, and then, uh, I do a YouTube series called Background and Characters. I improvise a character every week, uh, based on a random image I found on the internet that I pick and then improvise a character. And that's the background characters. I love that to death. Um, we are going to get into some anime talk, some of the shows I watched the last uh, few days. I'm going to drink some water right now. Here's your time to go get some water and to drink that. Or another beverage if that's your choice. I really needed that because obviously, as you, uh, I got sunburned, and I definitely need to replenish my fluids. Okay, back to building. Sorry for the delay. I wish I could guarantee that I would be home at 9 p.m. every Sunday because there are a lot of you watching right now, uh, and that's awesome. Thank you everybody for hanging out. Uh, remember, uh, if you can, um, click uh, the follow link if this is the first time here. Uh, follow me, set your notifications so you know when I go live. I'm going to be streaming again tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. But yeah, I'll be streaming tomorrow at 9 o'clock and Thursday and Saturday. And usually once a week, although not always. Uh, I like being super chill on Sunday. I do too. I uh, I work on Sundays uh, and I don't. I can't ever guarantee when I'll be home. That's, uh, yes, that, that is, um, EDT, yes. 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern, um, is my streaming schedule. So, I will be streaming for another 40 minutes tonight. Um, that's the plan, anyway. Uh, I might cut out a little early, but probably not. Same pat time, same pat channel, indeed. And we got the Blitz to, to keep working on, which we're gonna, you know, keep pounding away at. I'm excited to, to work on this kit. Like I said, I don't know a lot about Gundam Seed, but I do know what I like, and I think the Blitz Gundam is pretty rad looking. All right, so. Um, all right, so now I'm going to talk about some of the anime I watched since the Thursday stream, because a lot of stuff comes out on Friday. So um, I'm now going to talk about some of those shows. First and foremost. Um, This is the last time I will talk about Do You Love Your Mom and Her Two-Hit Multi-Target Attacks. I'll say the name again. Uh, it has been shorthand on the internet to Isekai Mom. A lot of people call it Isekai Mom. It is an Isekai. It's called Do You Love Your Mom and Her Two-Hit Multi-Target Attacks. Um, I'm done. They went to go get armor, and it was just an excuse for the mom to wear revealing outfits and the son to be embarrassed, and then the son was embarrassed like he should be, and then the show decided that he was being a jerk because he's a teen that doesn't want to fuck his mom. God damn it, this show. I like the minor characters a lot, but not enough, and I don't, we haven't met one of the supporting characters, but I never will. Because I do not want to watch another episode of Do You Love Your Mom and Her Two-Hit Multi-Target Attacks, a.k.a. Isekai Mom. I don't want to watch any more of it. It's bad. It's bad. The premise... Th we've hit this modern era now where there are isekais where people know, their, know what isekais are. Like, 
there people will be like, oh, I don't read a lot of like the Demon Lord retry has a joke in it where a character goes, if I knew this was going to happen, I would have read more light novels. Like I like that awareness. I think that's fun. So the idea that this the main dude knows it that like the idea of of this show of like jumping into a, a fantasy world and living in a video game and he's excited about it it's kind of interesting but the whole part where his mom is there too and it's a goofy sex romp i don't i don't want to i don't want to watch it anymore maybe it turns around and becomes fucking rad i don't think it does I bet it doesn't become rad. So, I'm done with that show. Now, it's not an isekai, but it is a fantasy action show that is fucking great. And I do love, and is maybe my favorite show of the season, although it is started late in the season. So, it's maybe hard to judge it for that. Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon season two? Donmachi, season two. This, look, is the name just as bad? Yes, the name is not good. The name, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Is not a good name for a show. It's an awesome action show that feels like, that has like RPG mechanics. And it's great. And this one, this episode didn't even focus on the main character. It focused on the supporting characters. And a thing that people, have, myself included, have been waiting for since season one happened. The Hestia family is fucking growing. And if you don't know what that means, it's rad. There's more than one member of the Hestia family now. And more are coming. And it fucking rules. And I'm so psyched about that shit. Because it's a good show. And I recommend it. I'm having trouble getting this piece in. This one piece went in fine. This other one, for some reason, does not want to go in. I do not know why. So I'm trying to get this to, to sit right. Um, But yeah. Dan Machi. Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon season two? We're only three episodes in. The pacing of it is so good. The action is really good. Uh, I can't wait to see more of it. Um, I am so psyched about this show. Can't recommend it enough. As I said, it might be my favorite show of the season. Now, the other show that might be my favorite show of the season is Dr. Stone. The, the tension in this one Look, I'm not going to... No spoilers. There's a cliffhanger here. And I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. Now, if you watch the opening animations, you know there are more characters in this world. That there's not just four characters. There's more than that. And we get the hint of one of those characters. And that's interesting. And beyond that, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but... It's very clever... And very interesting. The science is all apparently true. Like they talk about how to make gunpowder. And they're like hey. This is real. Please don't make gunpowder. But the way we described it. Is a rudimentary way to make gunpowder. Please don't make gunpowder. Please please please. But yeah I love it. The science is real. It's a weird show. Dr. Stone like. Uh, Crunchyroll has really been pushing it. And it makes sense. Because it is like a really inventive show. I think the character design is really cool. Um, and then... It's not a spoiler to say... Uh, they would never have aired that here on TV. Teaching the kiddos about explosives. Yes. That would have been edited. They definitely would have edited that out of... Uh, if, that, if it aired... If it didn't air on a streaming service. Yes. If that got licensed to a network, it would definitely not have been aired like that. Uh, but yeah, it, the, the science is apparently like pretty on the nose uh, on the show. 
All right, I got to figure out how this goes on. It just says it goes up. It doesn't really. I'm not sure how this fits. Sorry. Um. Hmm. All right, I think it just goes like that, and I'll I'll see. I'm not this one component doesn't feel right, and I don't know why, but it does not. Don't know why. We'll see what happens when I add more pieces to it. All right, that looks all right. Figure it out. Um, but yeah, Doctor Stone is really cool. Uh, I think it's a really good show, and I am enjoying it very much. So I'm looking forward to more of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, two more anime shows to talk about. Because, uh, you know, second half of the show, uh, or stream, I always try to talk about some anime. Um, let's see. What do we got? Oh, uh, we did get the third episode of Fire Force. They took a week off because of the uh, tragic arson um, uh, that happened uh uh, Kyoto Studios, um, or Kyoto Animation, I should say. So they, the Fire Force, because it is a show about fires and firefighting and human combustion. They took a week off, and which was a good call on their part. Uh, but they're back, and it's a it's a solid shonen show. Uh, I love this guy who this main character who can't help but smile, even though he has a sadistic demon looking smile and people think he's an asshole he's just smiling through the pain it's a lot of good character stuff a lot of good interpersonal stuff you're starting to meet more of the minor characters fire force is a compelling show um i am pleasantly surprised with it i didn't know what it was gonna necessarily be but uh i have been really enjoying it uh i do really recommend fire force uh, and then Fruits Basket, I have nothing really to say about Fruits Basket. I'm a little bored with it right now. Uh, I just don't know if I'm in the mood for drama. It's good, and the comedy moments are solid, and the characters are strong still and enjoyable. I just don't know if I'm super into it right now. I don't know. Uh, but... I love that it exists. I love there's a remake, and it seems it feels just like very true to the show. And I like that. I'm into it. All right, we got to put more pieces on this. More red pieces, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think that's all the anime that I want to talk about today. Yeah. So, um, I'll talk about uh. Ari Fuerta, Ari Ferta and One Piece. I haven't watched One Piece, even though, because normally One Piece like comes out right before my stream on Saturday, but I still wanted to save it, uh, so I had something to talk about tomorrow, because Monday already is a tough uh, night for me to talk about anime, because there isn't a lot that comes out on Sundays and Mondays right now, so I always need something to talk about. But I will talk about uh, um that tomorrow because yeah i haven't i have not watched one piece yet i will i'm actually probably going to watch it tonight after the stream is over i'm going to get some late dinner um and then i'm going to most likely watch one piece so that i can talk about it tomorrow uh it's a great arc so far uh, blah, blah, blah. I think that's it. Like I said about the, you know, just anime talk, like what I'm watching. Uh, I have still have not watched Given. I still need to find time to add Given to my, uh, to my watch list. Because I keep hearing really good things about it. Um, and maybe I'll, maybe I'll take a break on, uh, watching, um, uh, fruit basket and make given the drama that I watch. I don't know. Hmm. 
going to do this. I do this on occasion where I just make the image bigger. Oops. And then this on. There we go. So I can kind of see how it looks. Uh, I do this a lot with kits that I've not worked on before. Uh, or I'm super familiar with from like anime or whatever. Like, like I said, I could build a death scythe with my eyes closed. But if I haven't seen the kit before, sometimes I need a little help putting it together. Did I miss a step? I did. I missed a piece. That would explain why... Honestly, that's why I was having trouble putting this piece together. Is because it doesn't fit... I forgot to put a piece on. There you go. I learned something. I was like, why does this not want to fit in? Oh. Because I didn't attach... The front of the fucking thing. Goes on here. That makes more sense. That looks like the proper front. Uh, you tell me you had a bunch of new anime. I haven't sat down and watched any in a good long time. Yeah, I mean, one of the, the nice things I do... or well, not nice things. I don't know, nice. A thing I found myself doing is because I watch a lot of shows is... Uh, part of my streams are me talking about the shows that I'm watching. Um, I think... The, the watching through the first season and then catching up to get to the second season of Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon is totally worth it. Um, I think uh, Ari Farta is, uh, is a show that comes out on Mondays. It's on Hulu. I think that's good right now. Um, definitely my favorite of the Isekais. The like I said, I'm going to stop watching one. I think I might make a video where I talk about those. I know, me with another goddamn video, but I don't know if I need another video series in my life. But I've been thinking about... I, I've been thinking about, instead of doing it twice a month, to do one... Um, uh, closer look video a month instead of two, and then one video about anime a month, like an anime discussion video. Because there are folks that are, would still be interested in that that don't watch every stream, and uh, I can like pick a topic and like kind of explore that topic. So I've been thinking that might be what I do, because uh, I am kind of running out of things to do in closer look. Like I said, the next one's going to be, the next one will be like me like taking apart a kit to use in the kit bash project that we're going to be doing. Um, six and seven. Great. We find those. But uh, after that, I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I'm going to do with a closer look. So the idea of doing it once a month, I think, makes more sense. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe it's like the first Monday of the month is Closer Look, and the th third Monday of the month is Untitled Anime Discussion Show. Because now, I gotta tell you this. I'm fairly good at naming things, so I think I'll come up with something. But, I don't know. My first inclination would be like, like, like Pat's Anime Club, because that is a thing that almost, almost all of you are too young to remember, which is the, uh, which is the Anime Club, which was when you had no, when you had only access to whatever anime you could buy. And you and your friends, or strangers, or strangers, would hang out and watch whatever anime people had. And you watch shows you didn't care about, because after that show you didn't care about, 
they someone was going to show the next episode of Naruto, and you could watch Naruto because that was the only way you're watching it. Or, in my case, you know, older entertainment. I belong to many an anime club, and they were different degrees of fine to not great. Um, but some of the people that I belong to in the not great club, uh, they would actually license, they would not license, they would support fan suppers. They would um, be like patrons and send money to get certain anime like they would pay for laser discs of some shows or shows that weren't on TV shows that you know were coming out on video they would like pay for that to happen or help support clubs which was nice which was cool but then there would be some real creepazoids there's one guy who was like a guy was in my late teens and he was in his definite probably my age now late like mid 30s to late 30s uh and i remember he would host the club but we always but there was always a time where he would like be um babysitting uh and so like Every once in a while, we would have to watch, like, kid-friendly stuff until the kids got picked up. And then much later, I found out that those were his kids. He called it babysitting. He called the time that he spent with his kids after the divorce babysitting. So that is the best indication of the quality of the person who ran an anime club that I belong to. I imagine a certain stench when you say bad anime club. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it didn't smell that bad, but yeah. This was like years later. Someone would go, you know those were his kids, right? And I'd be like, what? I knew he was divorced. I didn't know he had kids. He called it babysitting. That dude sucked. That guy sucked a lot. Trying to remember other things. That's the most egregious and the most nightmarish thing, I think, I of, of any of it. We just put a sticker on. It's really tiny. It, as if it's, that's bad. Aristophan, who is often pretty quiet here in chat, uh, which is great because I love it, Aristophan. You do you. You you enjoy your, in, the way you want to, but had to pipe in with, that's bad. When you get Aristophan talking, you know you goofed pretty hard. Not to say it was particularly normal, though. No, I mean, like, the best club was still, like, just full of randoms and weirdos. Like, lovely randoms and weirdos, but, like, the kind of people that would be in an anime club in the mid-90s. That's the kind of people that were in this club. People that were in the late 90s. People that were so in anime and just any excuse to watch it. Uh, I remember having a dude who was too old to be there in my college anime club. Not as bad as that. Yeah, I mean, this was also just like a random assortment of people. It was a lot of people that like all went to the same comic shop that got invited to join this club and then felt weird about leaving it. Uh, I think I attached this wrong, so I'm going to try to pry this off. I think I attached this wrong, but I can't tell. This is the cockpit. It looks like this is the thing that opens for the cockpit, but I think I. I don't know if I attached this properly. Eh, looks right. Might just connect weird. We'll find out. Uh, I do remember him pulling the Col Goss, why you clearly mean the Visigoths from like 3000 BC, right? Ugh. Dumb. 
That is somebody that really liked hearing themselves talk very clearly. Oh, you mean the Visigoths? Blah. Yes. It was definitely the Cyber Goths, says Ultron. And he pushed, yeah, pushed his goths up his nose. He snorted at his own joke because he knew that it was good. Why is this being annoying? This one's being a bit annoying. All right, so that goes like that. And then this goes like that. Weird. Also, the sticker came off. That's bad. He wasn't joking. Oh. He's just a real weirdo. Sorry, folks. Got The sticker is tiny. And then I was putting a lot of pressure on this piece to get it to work. And then the sticker came off. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, I have a lot of fond memories of uh, some people I met in my club days of just, like, trying to trying to fit in, trying to find my way. I remember some cool people. Uh, I belonged to a couple clubs, just, like, local friends. You know, yeah, go over somebody's house, watch a couple anime shows, do some tape trading, have a discussion of some things talk about the local scene let people know if there was like a smash tournament happening somewhere or or where the d or if oh the ddr uh, at this uh at the roller rink or whatever it's probably the movie theater uh has been serviced so you can go check that out it works again shit like that do have fond memories of that of the club scene, that club scene. That's why I'm thinking of calling an anime club, because they do have fond memories of it. Even though, like I said, some of it was not great. All right, I'll move on. This doesn't seem to connect great. There's more to do with it, but we'll move on. All right, I gotta do. Whoops, I just knocked over some sheets. Here, not good. Uh, yeah, it is tough to sometimes when you feel like you're alienating a bunch of weirdos. Um, uh, it it is it it can be a weird feeling. Uh, I have definitely been there where where you feel like, oh, these are my people, and you're like, oh wait, these might not be my people. Oh no, I was kind of hoping these would be my people. Uh, I remember watching Gundam Seed with people from Anime Club by all of us piling in one person's car with a second person's entire desktop PC and heading to a third person's off-campus apartment to watch it. Lastbrook, that is nonsense, and I can appreciate it, uh, and I love that sort of nonsense. But that is the kind, yeah, that is the thing you do. Well, how are we going to watch it? Well, it's all on my computer. Well, we don't have... We maybe have external hard drives, but we don't have uh, the ability to get it anywhere. So let's just bring a PC. Whoa! Uh, they are a blessing. Uh, Recyclable just gifted a Tier 1 sub uh, to Lars. Congratulations, Lars. You're now a, a, a subscriber. Thank you very much. Uh, let's throw the Bear Cave Moat in there. Welcome our new subscriber. And also, thank Recyclable for gifting that sub. Gifting subs is always a great way to support folks in chat because not everyone uh, you know, can pull the trigger on a subscription. So thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Um, and welcome. Uh, tomorrow's stream, because it's the last build stream of the month, a thing I do with the last build stream of the month is I do a random drawing where I pick a name uh, at random uh, from my subscriber base and then I send them a model kit uh 
from uh, from something that we built on the uh, on the stream. So everyone who's a subscriber is eligible tomorrow. I send them a whisper and you know try to make it work for them financially and about shipping things and do all that. So that's uh that'll be tomorrow and uh, now Lars is uh could win as a subscriber. There we go. All right, I got that chess piece done. The tiny little sticker flicked off. If I find it, I'll reapply it. But it's okay if we don't. I think I'm okay with that. Um, all right, we're going to build a little bit more of this kit. Uh, we're going to work on some of the backpack portion of it, which is cool. Into that. Uh, these are some H's and some K's. Uh... Yeah, it's very nice. I appreciate that very much. Um, that is the get, That is a gift for someone else, and that is really nice. Um, yeah, you get access to, I think, some pretty fun emotes. I mean, they are very dependent on the show. I don't know if they would work in other people's chats unless they happen to mention me, which would be a odd thing. Um, but yeah, that's really nice. It's very cool. Uh, I'm just going to look at and see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're going to finish up part of this backpack, and then I will probably bust out of here after we do a little more uh, building. Um, uh, this was a long weekend of I did my volunteering yesterday and then the beach trip today. Yeah, and I've got to reapply some lotion because I am sunburned, as I said. It'll be better tomorrow. We'll feel fine. And as I said, uh, I kept my head protected the whole time. So even though my face burned, my forehead and uh, my scalp did not. So that means that I will not get a headache because I've had that. I've had the the uh, the bald spot uh, sunburn, and that is awful. So then I just woken up in the middle of the night with a pounding headache, being like, "What? Why does everything hurt?" I was like, "Oh, I'm sunburned on my head." It sucked. All right goes like this. Instead, I've just sunburned on my arms and my face. Just fine. It happens. Alright, J2. Which is... Oh, this purple is so nice. We've done, we, we haven't done a lot of purple. There's not a lot of purple in this kit, like I said. I love that it's mostly black, and black, purple, and red is such they're just great colors. They just play together so well. I don't, you know, all the time talk about the color choices of a model kit, but when they stand out like this, I do want to chat about them because it just looks so cool. Um. All right, so this goes into this. Then this goes into this. Also, uh, the, I was at the beach today. Uh, you know, talk about that today, uh, tonight. Uh, no one was in the arcade. It looked like a very bad little beach arcade, and uh, ski ball was down. Ski ball was not operational, so I don't know if it was technically an arcade, a beach arcade that does not have working. Uh, ski ball t t might not actually count as an arcade. All right, we got the back piece here, our back part of our backpack. We're gonna build uh, tomorrow. We'll work on the uh, the what appears to be rockets on the back and the head, and start on the arms. Uh, oh, I can't wait to build the grappling hook and the cool shield gun. It's a gun underneath the shield. It's a shield gun. 
So that's going to be fun to build. This is a great kit. I'm excited to put this together. Um, hey, uh, I'm going to wrap up, but I just want to take a moment to say thank you all so much for hanging out with me tonight. Um, to have over 20 folks watch on a Sunday when I don't build on Sundays. This was uh, me stepping in to, to fill because I didn't stream yesterday. Uh, to have new people come in and subscribe and follow. Uh, two raids, which is so nice. And then also... My regulars, so many wonderful uh, regulars in the chat. Um, I know I talk about how you are such a nice, respectful chat and how much I appreciate that, that y'all are so supportive of each other and uh, the fact that, like, I don't have mods. We don't have moderators. We have Nightbot. We don't have moderators here, and we've not needed it because y'all are awesome, and then you tell all their awesome people about the stream. That means a lot to me. The folks that people hung out, and our new people have come in, and we had a 22-month resub today. That's unbelievable and so nice. Um, so I hope to see all of you, uh, if you can, tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern time uh, for my next stream. And then next Thursday, I'll be building again. We're going to work on this Blitz, which we just started. Um, but uh, this, this felt great, and it was really nice to have you all here. Uh, and I'll see you tomorrow. On the next Bill with Bear workshop, good night and goodbye.